The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. It's Friday, 8.30 a.m., 60 minutes to go until that opening bell. And we got markets in positive territory overnight. A little bit of volatility towards 2 in the morning, but you see the acceleration. We'll zoom in on the S&Ps. Yesterday's action, we finish at a price point of about 34.50. We trade lower overnight to 34.40. And from there, we're up about 12 points on the session right now. 3461 in the S&Ps, NASDAQ futures positive as well, 11,687, Dow up 90 points, 28,358, we get the Russell up 10 points as well, 1640, the Russell now quite a pop when you look at where it was towards the end of Wednesday, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock Eastern time on Wednesday, down at 1587. We're a solid 50-plus points in the Russell above that level, quite a day for the Russell yesterday, continuing those gains today. Crew contract up nine cents at forty seventy three right now. We got the gold contract up twelve dollars at nineteen sixteen. Gold hitting a low at eighteen ninety four yesterday before bouncing the high this week nineteen thirty six. Silver up twenty four cents at twenty four ninety five. And notes and bonds continuing the trend. Lower price, higher yield. The ten year down down four ticks one thirty eight oh six. The thirty year down sixteen ticks at one seventy one twenty seven. And we'll start it off with the VIX this morning. As the market seems to creep higher, this VIX creeping lower, back to underneath where we were any time this week right now. The VIX trading at 27.64. That would be above where we closed out Friday. But as you can see, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday action, we are below any of that right now, 27.64. All right, jumping around to headlines, pretty interesting. You have that VIX just trailing back. We're now 11 days from the presidential election. We had the debate last night. Uh, some actual policy discussed in there. Uh, seems like people maybe made up their mind already, if not 11 days out. A lot of people already voting. I've already mailed in my ballot uh, in Florida. But when you talk about the possibility of a stimulus with 11 days to go, some of those days are going to be tied up with the Supreme Court nomination, nomination vote in the Senate. You have a lot of Senate skepticism on pre-election stimulus, and that now spreading to the House. House members saying we're not going to vote on this if the Senate's not going to come back, where they end up on the $2 trillion package, where senators end up, Republican senators controlling the Senate, if they'd be willing to pass something like that with 11 days to go until the election. Not sure that's a likelihood, but it hangs in the balance on a Friday. I wouldn't put too much faith in it, but of course, like anything else, anything is possible. Earnings season, Intel trading lower on tough results for its data center group they beat estimates overall as work from home continued because of the coronavirus pandemic the data center unit drives revenue from enterprises and government customers that pulled back during the quarter getting into their numbers dollar 11 right in line they did beat on 18.33 versus 18.25 Data Center Group came in 5.91 billion, down 7%, and the market was looking for 6.21. Revenue from enterprises and government went down 47% after two quarters of growth above 30%. Average selling price across the division, 15% lower. Intel, some tough numbers buried in there. And there you see the drop off from 54. We're down more than $5 right now, basically, at 48.58 for Intel. And you back this up. It's been a tough uh, period of earnings for Intel. You back it up to the last earnings. That's when they came out, basically ceded territory to AMD in the future of some of the chips that they're making. Intel drops from above 60. You're trading at 47.50. This morning, 48.50 is where you're going to open up. So pretty close to these lows that you've had recently for Intel as they continue to struggle. Jumping over to AMD in that context, quite a different chart, up to 79.42. AMD trading higher with the market this morning. There's your five-minute bar to about 80.57. All right, what else we got going on? Jumping through some of the stocks with action. American Express out with their numbers. 
smaller than expected earnings despite the revenue projections. So they earned $1.30 a share, $8.75 billion for the third quarter. The market was looking for $1.35 on $8.62. So a slight miss on earnings, a slight beat on revenue. Shares trading lower, though, this morning. There's American Express from almost 107, quite the day it had yesterday, basically giving back all of those gains from a price point of 104.79, trading at 101.70, which is kind of in the realm of where it just opened at yesterday for American Express on their numbers. Bloom and Brands, they're out with their numbers as well. Restaurant chain, smaller than expected loss. Takeout business remains strong. Loss of 12 cents a share, 771 million in revenue. It's a big number in 90 days. They're a big company. Uh, market was looking for 33 cents for a loss and 750 million. It's a BLMN, yes. And there you see that on the beat to 1827 from 1760. Some context on this stock, clawing back. I mean, check out these lows, right? And a lot of these companies, they were facing potential bankruptcy, which is why you had rightfully so such an acceleration to lower prices as their business dried up overnight some of the companies able to capitalize on online delivery bloom and brands being one of them they're up to 1773 yesterday and we're going to open somewhere above 18 dollars and uh you're almost right back to where you were early february of this year calendar year you opened at about 22 dollars for bloom and brands but you traded lower in the beginning of the year regardless Shake Shack. So we got research Oppenheimer initiated coverage outperform said in a note that Shake Shack's U.S. footprint could grow to three times its current size. Shake Shack. Quite a chart for them. They are back at basically pre-COVID levels and you're going to open a little bit higher even today after quite the day it had yesterday. 7411 for Shake Shack. We had Chipotle earnings earlier this week, Wednesday after the bell. Sells off from 1366 down to a price point of almost 1280. 1260 was the low here initially. 1253, trading at 1309, getting a lot of that back. And this company, a strong company, they had they had strong earnings. Um, but as you see, a lot of growth already priced in from 415 up to almost 1400. Chipotle this morning going to open somewhere above 1305. So you're basically just consolidating in this area from about 1200 up to just below 1400 you've been in this area since about the middle of august so you're going to back about two months and you know you were trading at under 900 dollars pre-covid you've now based it around maybe 1300 as this oscillates around that number all right what else we got going on scrolling up capital one they were out with their numbers beat revenue expectations for the third quarter 7.38 billion in revenue Market was only looking for 6.68, quite a beat. Non-interest income rose nearly 50% year over year. Shares were up 4.2%. That is quite a, uh, earnings. There's Capital One. Now they're going to open up above 80 this morning. Here's 80 on the chart. You got a bid ask of 80.55 by 80.99, uh, challenging the highs we had earlier this month. Challenging the highs. The next high going up to June is going to be for them a price point of 85.22. And we're going to open today just at above 80. All right, checking back on the S&Ps right now, 3461. And you see where we opened the calendar year, 2020. You're talking about a price point of opening basically of 3236 was where we closed out the previous calendar year. So we're approximately 230 points, maybe a possible 6 7% positive for the calendar year. Going into the election, October. We got COVID cases spiking. We'll take a look at some of those numbers when we come back. See what else we have on tap for Friday trading. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200% in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once-in-a-generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar, silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps positive by 12 right now, 34.61. I mean, we're climbing up. You get up here, we're going to reach a high. Tuesday's high in the S&P, you take a look at, we're trading at about 34.70. So that's the next area we might trade to. Beyond that, we just basically have the sell-off on Monday up there at about 34.90. The sell-off on Friday afternoon, if you recall, right at 3,500. The final hour of Friday, we trade from 3,500 down to a price point of almost 30. 460. We'll see what happens today. Friday action. Coronavirus. Jump into some of the numbers. So it got talked about in the debate last night a little bit. Uh, stark numbers when you get into it. As we almost set a record yesterday, depending on which number you're looking at, but you get into the actual curve. We're talking about 75,000 cases in a day yesterday. Pretty stark. The previous record dating back to, as the Times has it, July 16th, just above it, it's 75,687. You see where it's hitting the country in terms of the Midwest, Wisconsin, one of the starkest areas getting hit up there. Um, different areas at different times, but this thing moving forward, and you look at, I thought I had one more article up. Uh, but nonetheless, stark numbers, fortunately, deaths not rising, but deaths a lagging indicator. Care probably getting better and is getting better. We'll use that to jump over to the FDA approving uh, Gilead's remdesivir as a coronavirus treatment. So you have Gilead getting a pop on that news, obviously, from 6067. Last night, that uh, news comes out after the close. You trade up to 6530 initially, pairing some of those at 6323 for some context on where we've been on this equity. Quite an acceleration, actually, to the downside. This would be quite a pop to 63, but for some context on where you are on this chart, there is $63 for Gilead. We were trading at about $85 at the peak in early April. Pre-COVID levels, you were trading at about $67 on this chart. All right, what else we got going on? Uber and Lyft. So both of these companies trading a little bit lower. We'll pull up their charts first. Uber. 
quite the day yesterday some of these charts now just zooming in what i have down there in terms of where this thing has been consolidating you see the recent highs i mean that's definitely an area that it's faced some resistance 3878 3852 3835 all of those highs traded lower 3289 the recent low we were bouncing around 30 dollars for a while this morning though you see the action there's a little bit of a drop lower that drop lower having to do with uber and lyft facing a setback in a case to reclassify workers um, this case they have going on in California. So they must comply with a preliminary injunction requiring them to stop classifying drivers as independent contractors pending further action and appeals court ruled Thursday. That will not take effect immediately, though. And they have their ballot measure coming up 11 days from right now on Election Day Tuesday, uh, which puts it to the voters. So they must comply with it. The order won't take effect right away. It was a unanimous decision. The appeals court here just basically determining, though, whether the trial judge had the discretion to issue a preliminary injunction. Uh, the appeals court doesn't deal with the question of the overall case. Uh, and it's a determination that basically they went through the process. They showed the reasonable probability and that the judge weighed, indeed, an overwhelming likelihood of prevailing at trial, et cetera. Uber and Lyft will likely have about 60 days to ask the Supreme Court to review the decision and the temporary reprieve granted to the companies for the length of the appeals process will lift 30 days after the case is sent back to the trial court, basically saying they have a lot of time. They have Prop 22 up to the voters, but it'll be interesting to see what happens, um, which way this goes, how California votes. California, uh, basically a country upon itself in terms of GDP, California if they pass that prop and it passes allowing employees to be determined to be contractors i imagine uber and lyft get a lift to higher prices of course uh if it doesn't though seems like the courts are lined up against them especially in california right now and they're gonna have to reshape how they do their business potentially in both of those areas so you have uber 36.89 yesterday you're down a bit jumping over to lyft shares whoops l y f t and there you see their drop off as well, 2560 to 2533. If you're considering either of these companies, they are a tale of two different stories. Uh, Lyft, you see the pain that it's in. I mean, we're right down here. For some context here, Lyft is trading at a price point of $25 and change. And you are trading at a price point of 20, a high of 2486 on March. 20th that is so we're talking about literally the days of the lows right versus uber look at that difference we're trading at 36 dollars and change in uber the lows of march correlated to even if you get this high up here almost 24 dollars you're 50 percent above that price point on uber uber of course with uber eats there's a story out there that they're trying to think about buying one of their competitors yet again um so they have a lot going on Whereas Lyft is not accelerating in any way. Uber, able to use this time period to accelerate their food delivery business. Lyft, just suffering through the pain of a dry up of travel, ride sharing, social behavior, international travel, let alone domestic travel. Uh, Uber, though, pretty remarkable that you're hovering right near that high we had prior to COVID at 4186. You're trading at 36 and change. They got a lot riding on the line, though, on Election Day. All right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we wait for this market open. We got 40, excuse me, yes, 42 minutes. Microsoft shares up a bit. We got the NASDAQ 100 up 33. Checking in on Tesla. They had earnings this week, of course. Tesla gets the pop on their earnings, pulls back pretty hard yesterday, basically giving back all the gains it had on their numbers, and they had some pretty strong numbers. Tesla trading down a bit at 424. Amazon shares up a bit at 31.92 from 31.76. It's been quite a little sell-off for Amazon from last Friday. Friday, we started at 3,400 a week ago. We're trading just under 3,200 for Amazon. Walmart, 4143.83, up a bit, jumping around to some of the other just retail stocks. Quite a sell-off for Target recently from 167 to below 160. We're trading right at 160 this morning. All right, jumping around to commodities. And how about commodities? Bitcoin, crypto, 13,015. Some context on Bitcoin. There's your daily, down to 4,200. We're going to back it all the way up. 
We're at prices. You're talking about all the way back to June of 2019. I got a price print of 13915 We're right up at that level. We just made a high of 13285 After that, the run, the next thing in sight would be the high when futures started trading on Bitcoin December of 2017. Uh, pretty remarkable. Futures start trading. First time you're able to short, you're able to short it on an exchange on top of that. 20,650, you were at 3,000 over the period of one year from 20,000. But we're back at 13,000 on Bitcoin. All right, this market just kind of hanging out. We're up 11 points, 3460. I don't know if we'll get any news for stimulus today. We will see. But the market, uh, maybe not too worried about it at this point as factoring in that that would be a tough one coming up with 11 days until Election Day. Stay tuned, folks. We get the S&Ps at 3460. We get the Dow up 89, NASDAQ up 33. I'll be right back in three minutes. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We have this market just hanging out positive territory. S&P stuck at that 3461 price point. You see the acceleration we had in both directions last night. We're looking at five-minute bars. We've been making slightly new highs with each little trade in positive territory. 530, yet again at almost 7 in the morning. 
And then since then, creeping up, 34.61, taking a look at the NASDAQ, 100. Not quite back up to Thursday's highs. You compare that to the S&P as we're now over that level. NASDAQ not quite up there. That price point from where we sold off early in the day in the NQs, you're talking about 11,724. We're within about 40 points of that level in the NASDAQ. All right, what else we got going on? Jumping around to stories out there, Mattel, they have their numbers out. The toy maker beat expectations on the top and bottom lines. Mattel reported profit of 95 cents and 1.63 billion in revenue. The market was only looking for 39 cents on 1.46 billion. So they took in 1.63, the market was looking for 1.46. As you'd expect, those are decent numbers, to put it lightly. Mattel pops higher, 14.45 from under 13. We're trading at 13.86, some context on Mattel. Mattel almost getting it back we're going to open at almost 14 the recent highs of 14.83 uh but you put this on a, on a monthly and look at that slide quite a slide indeed from 2000 and the real sell-off beginning of 2014 and then again the beginning we're talking about august of 2016 and we've been basically consolidating we were under 15 dollars all the way back to october of 2017 so you're talking about more than three years now or basically about three years, and we're gonna open at $14, but when you put it on a daily, that's a strong acceleration. We're gonna be a double off the lows of 653, and we're gonna come in right up to those highs for the year of 1483 for Mattel. All right, folks, Friday trading. We saw what happened last Friday, the final hour of the day. We got stimulus hanging in the balance. We got 11 days until a presidential election, uh, and we got a VIX. Seems appropriate to end the, end the program with a VIX of 27.59. Seems very comfortable just hanging right near that 28 price point as we await that election. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pezzamento is coming up live next with Trade What You See. We'll be right back.